Welcome to City Roundup, brought to you by the City of Pensacola, with your host, Saida Rosa. City Roundup is your one-stop shop for everything having to do with the City of Pensacola. And now, Saida. Happy Friday, Pensacola, and thanks for tuning in to City Roundup. I'm your host, Saida Rosa, with the City of Pensacola. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and the City of Pensacola is taking part in observation of the cause. On April 2nd, Mayor Grover Robinson stood on the steps of City Hall with community members to issue a proclamation. Thank you very much, Allison. Uh, thank you all for being here. And like you said, it's, it's, it's an incredible uh, day, beautiful day here. We got the flowers and the, uh, the flags and the building behind us. And it certainly reminds us that most of the time in Pensacola, things are, are always great and wonderful. However, we have those days where things where we might not be at our best. And certainly, unfortunately, we have individuals here who do experience uh, sexual assault. And But I'm thankful that we have a team of people at Lakeview Center uh, that, that, that can take care of them and are here to uh, to help the victims and, and restore uh, 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 everything with them and, and them back to health uh, and where they can move forward. Um, I was at the League of Cities. Uh, I was in Tallahassee with the League of Cities, and they had a uh, they had a, a briefing for us to go to the Appalachie Center uh, that they have there in Tallahassee, which certainly is nice and it has some nice recognition. But uh, you know, I felt very proud to know that I lived in a city and I was the mayor of a city that had a great organization that was just as good as that with Lake. Center, and I feel very, very honored uh, that we have that in our community. And again, uh, certainly uh, there are times where things don't work out for our citizens the way we want. We certainly want to prevent those things as much as we can from happening in the in the forefront. Uh, but when they do, we certainly want. Uh, we, we're very thankful that we have organizations like Lakeview uh, that are here to address uh, those items with victims and and restore them back to the health uh, that 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 they need. But uh, we certainly want to do whatever we can to prevent. So with that in mind. We have a proclamation that I'm going to read, and then I'm going to hand off this microphone. I'm going to sign it because it's going to be difficult to do all this at once. Um, so I'm going to read this proclamation. Uh, whereas sexual assault affects people of all racial, cultural, and ethnic backgrounds, and whereas in addition to the immediate physical and emotional cost, sexual assault may also have associated consequences of post-traumatic st stress disorder, substance abuse, depression, homelessness, eating disorders, and suicide. And whereas sexual assault can be devastating for not only the survivor, but also for the family and friends of the survivor. And whereas no person, organization, agency, or community can eliminate sexual assault on their own, but we can work together to educate our entire population about what can be done to prevent sexual assault, support survivors and their significant others, and increase support for agencies providing services to survivors. And whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month uh, provides an excellent opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing sexual violence before it can even start, <clears throat> and to show support for the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy, service, and assistance to sexual assault survivors. And whereas the city of Pensacola strongly supports the efforts of national, state, and local partners and of every citizen to actively engage in public and private efforts to prevent sexual violence, it is time for all of us to start conversations, take appropriate action, and support one another to create a safer environment for all. Now, therefore, I, Grover Robinson IV, Mayor of the City of Pensacola, do hereby proclaim April 2019 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the City of Pensacola and do hereby encourage the citizens of Pensacola to support and recognize the courageous efforts of local organizations supporting the efforts to eliminate sexual assault. In witness whereof, I have hereto put this, my hand and cause the seal of the Pensacola uh, to be affixed this second day of April 2019, the Mayor Grover Robinson. If you're on social media, make sure to follow Mayor Robinson. Just search Pensacola Mayor on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're about to have a new iconic addition to downtown Pensacola. In the latest episode of our new show, hosts Tanya Baden and John Scanlon talk about the grand opening of the Pensacola Ferry Landing. They'll also tell us why Pensacola is featured in Boating Magazine and give us details on an upcoming Easter egg hunt. Those topics and more coming up right now. 
Welcome back to another episode of our City News Show. I'm your host, Tanya Vaden. And I'm John Scanlon. And we're in front of the newest iconic addition to downtown Pensacola. Come April 13th, we will celebrate the grand opening of the Pensacola Ferry Landing. City of Pensacola and its partners will hold a ribbon cutting ceremony beginning at 10 a.m. The grand opening of the new landing comes in anticipation of Pensacola Bay Cruises beginning service for the recreational season. HMS Ferries Incorporated is the concessioner under contract with the National Park Service to operate their two catamaran style boats. Once in service, they will transport passengers between Quietwater Beach, Fort Pickens, and downtown. Again, the grand opening is April the 13th at 10 a.m. The Portside Pensacola Vision Plan and Reinvestment Strategy is now available online. The 88-page document was presented to the City Council on Monday, March 25th. The report was put together by Moffitt and Nickel. Since June of last year, their team of maritime and urban planning experts worked with the community to get feedback about how the port should and could look in the future. The final vision reinforces the desire for core port operation areas, while other areas could engage in new pursuits in science, technology, education, research, and business. Go to cityofpensacola.com to view the report. Well, speaking of the port, it was just in a national magazine. Boat U.S. Magazine featured Pensacola in its April and May 2019 edition for hosting the American Magic Team while they prepare for the America's Cup. The magazine says pushing boundaries on sail and all boating technology on Pensacola Bay is a direct result of the efforts from local government, the port, and an active membership of the Pensacola Yacht Club. American Magic is using the Port of Pensacola to train here during the winter. Every month we recognize an employee who goes above and beyond. We would like to congratulate our Employee of the Month for March. Spring is here, ladies, and it's time to sign up for our golf clinic at Osceola. The Osceola Spring Ladies Golf Clinic will cover all of the aspects of the game. The golf course has secured Dallas 2 from Select Physical Therapy to help out with the clinic, which includes five classes that cover putting, chipping, full swing, and bunker play. The dates are April 13th and 20th and May 4th, 11th, and 18th. The cost for all five classes is $150. One class is $40. Visit or call the Osceola Pro Shop at 453-7599 for more information. Before we go, Tanya, don't we also have an Easter egg hunt coming up which benefits Mana Food Bank? That's right, and it's fun for the kiddos and a good cause. We hope to see you on April the 13th at the Roger Scott Athletic Complex for our annual Pensacola Easter egg hunt presented by Chick-fil-A. We will have egg hunts, carnival games, bounce houses, and photos with the Easter Bunny. Admission is free, but we ask that you bring a non-perishable food item to donate to Mana Food Bank. Visit PlayPensacola.com for more information. That's all we have for you on this episode. We thank you for watching, and we will see you next, next week. week. Have you ever wondered what happens to your recyclables after they've been picked up? In this edition of City Spotlight, Sanitation Services' Ronnie Harris takes us along for a ride to ECUA's Materials Recycling Facility, where items are ultimately sorted, prepared, and sold for repurposing. Got me a film crew with me. Me, movie star. If I'd known you was going to be doing all this, I wouldn't have volunteered. Hi, I'm Ronnie Harris, and I work for the city of Pensacola, and I'm an equipment operator, too. Walk me through the process of what happens after the guys who are out collecting recyclables uh, come over here. Well, they, they go collect the recyclables, and they bring them up here, as you filmed earlier, and they dump them in our hopper container. We pack anywhere, normally around 35 to 38,000 pounds in this rig that we're in now. That's a day's worth of recyclables. And then we pull it out. Uh, clean it up, transfer it, and then uh, shut the door and we transfer it out to where we're going right now, to the recycle center. Do you do any of the routes at all, or are you strictly just uh, hauling? Yes, ma'am, I just drive these big rigs. I've done graduated up from all that. Right now we're towing about 25,000 pounds. Normally we haul anywhere from 30, 30, I'd say from 35 to 40. Back again, recyclables. We are pulling this big building and uh, we back up amongst all the other recycling. We open the rear door and then we operate the truck and unload the truck, shut our door and come back. Okay, that's it, that's it. Speaking of being more environmentally friendly, we now turn to our green tip of the week. Share. 
party decorations, tools, furniture, and clothing can all be rented or borrowed. Less waste is something to celebrate. We'll be right back after this. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. The natural gas cooking as well as the fireplace and the, the uh, atmosphere that you have on a really nice, well-designed lanai, you can entertain real well. It's very comfortable. People are real homey there. And uh, we we find the lanai to be a real design feature along with having the natural gas to implement that. Natural gas from Pensacola Energy. The clean, reliable, earth-friendly choice. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Welcome back. The city is looking for great people to be part of our team. This week's featured job is for a public safety telecommunicator. This is highly responsible, specialized work involving the receiving, screening, prioritizing, and transmission of emergency 911 calls. To learn more about it and apply, visit PensacolaCityJobs.com. Some food for thought for your Friday. In this episode of Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, host John Scalen from Pensacola Energy shows us how to make Kingfisher coleslaw. This episode features Chef Brian from Kingfisher. On this episode of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites, we have Chef Brian from Kingfisher making Kingfisher coleslaw. Stick around and find out how it's done. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. I'm your host, John Scanlon, and I'm here with a very special guest. We have Chef Brian from Kingfisher. Brian, thank you so much for being on the show. What do you have for us today? Uh, today we have Kingfisher coleslaw. Um, it is kind of a classic style coleslaw made from scratch. Excellent. I can't wait. And you guys are in, I guess, the old Slips building at 1500 Barrancas Avenue. Uh, you've renovated the place. It looks fantastic inside. Uh, I've been by to eat. Excellent food. You guys are doing a great job. What made you decide Pensacola? Uh, Pensacola is the place that my wife and I fell in love with just a few years ago when her parents moved here. We were living in New Orleans and uh, they started thinking about retiring in Florida. And uh, I guess on the, one of their road trips, they stopped in Pensacola and bought a house. So. <laughs> We're like, all right, we need to be closer to the family. It was here or Toledo, Ohio. And uh, I think my parents are going to move down here pretty soon, too. So oh, that's excited. nice. Yeah. That, not, a, not a hard choice on that one, huh? No. <laughs> no. Well, excellent. So I love coleslaw. Um, and I know we were just talking. A lot of times you just buy it in a bag. You buy it pre-made. I, I can't wait to see how you, how you do it from scratch. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, a couple nice techniques involved with making coleslaw from scratch. You know, uh, one is making a mayonnaise which is kind of a fun culinary uh, technique. And the other one is just using a nice slicer and getting some knife, nice, uh, good knife cuts in there um, just to make it pretty and have a good mouth feel when you eat it. So yeah, I'm excited to get going. So, you know, uh, a good place to start is an egg, actually. Um, start of many great, many great recipes starts with an egg. And here we're just gonna use uh, one egg yolk uh, whatever kind of eggs you use at home, uh, whether it's, you know, from the grocery store or farmer's market or whatever, it all works the same um, in terms of uh, what's going on inside. You know, there's a lot of fat, so we're going to get a lot of richness just from that yolk. And it's also going to act as an emulsifier so that when we're adding the water elements, you know, like vinegar and lemon juice, together with the oil elements, we're going to end up with a nice thick sauce instead of just... Uh, you know, separated out stuff, which, you know, if we were just to pour the oil into all the water, it would just be like oil and water. That's the difference between a good coleslaw right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and you can do it just with, <laughs> you know, just moving it around. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get the egg yolk in there. Every time you see an egg, you always definitely want to add a little bit of salt, whatever the recipe is. And then we're also going to add some black pepper. So why is that? Oh, for the salt? Um, well, even in uh, sweet recipes, like a creme brulee, um, it's a good idea to have a little bit of salt in with the egg because it really brings the flavors out. Okay. Or, or a cookie or anything like that. Um, you know, just like salt will accentuate the flavors in savory food, a little bit of salt accentuates all the flavors in also in sweet, sweet okay. uh, bacon pastry. So salt and pepper on the egg. Um, since we've got 
dry spices going in there. I'm just going to do our celery seed right now because that's uh, one of the things that we put in our coleslaw that is just a little bit unique. It's not over the top. It's not anything that's never been done before, <laughs> but we kind of like it um, in there. The celery seed, I think, is just kind of nice. You just have to be a little bit careful with the celery seed because if you use too much, it can get pretty bitter mm. pretty quickly. So now we get to break the egg yolk. And uh, I'm just going to stir it a little bit as I add the lime juice or sorry, lemon juice because lemon juice will start to cook the egg as will the sugar actually. So you just want to move it around a little bit. You don't have to get too crazy. And then I'm going to add the vinegar. Oh, what and, kind of vinegar is that? Oh, red wine vinegar. Okay. So about a teaspoon of lemon juice, a teaspoon of red wine vinegar here. And then I'm going to say a teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard. You can use any mustard that you have in the house. But I like Dijon. It gives that little kick. That's yeah, it's uh... really sharp. And I love mustard. I have a reputation for using mustard a lot. And this is a great way to use it. Not only because it adds a good flavor, because also it acts as an emulsifier. So the egg yolk and the mustard are both very good emulsifiers. So basically when we add the oil in here, it's going to help to create our mayonnaise. And that's the emulsification where the water molecules are suspended within the fat molecules. Or actually, I think that's wrong. I think it's the fat molecules suspended within the water <laughs> molecules. Uh, but anyway, it gets you that nice mayonnaise. And here we have uh, canola oil. And this is a half a cup of canola oil. And if I wanted to make a full-fledged mayonnaise, I would probably use closer to almost two cups, mm -hmm. which seems like a lot of oil. And it is, but it just kind of shows you the ratio when you're making mayonnaise that it's like eight to one oil to um, wet ingredients. And the, the thicker, the more you add the oil, the thicker it's going to get. But the fact that we're adding less oil here, we're going to actually not, it's not actually really going to be a mayonnaise per se because it's not thick enough. We haven't added enough oil, but it will be kind of a really loose mayonnaise, which is going to be really nice. Like you're saying, almost like a dressing. Like uh, a dressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, Caesar dressing just starts this way. A lot of dressings start this way. You could do a lot of dressings the same way without the egg to make a vinaigrette, but still using a little bit of mustard and maybe a little bit of minced shallot in with your vinegar. And then you have a nice dressing. You could put some Italian seasonings in there and make, that's how we make our Italian dressing at the restaurant, uh, which is also vegan. Um, so there, that's a pretty nice looking sauce already. I'll, I'll say this. It I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm amazed right now because you pour that steadily <laughs> while stirring it. I, I couldn't do either of those. Right. I mean, I need two hands. I, yeah. That was awesome. And that's a good place to kind of grab a friend and say, hey, could you help me out with this? <laughs> also, putting the bowl on this little tray is good. Or if your bowl doesn't have a little foot on it, you know, a lot of chefs will kind of do, do that and then do like mm. that if you just have a regular bowl. And then you can set it right in there. And then th that way you don't necessarily need a friend oh, absolutely. to hold it. But if you have a friend, more the better. Buttermilk, was, we use a lot of this at the restaurant. I was kind of surprised how much we actually started going through, but <laughs> uh, this is one of the ways that we use it. And it's not the only way. Uh, hush puppies and m marinating fish and some other things that we'll be doing. So you make a lot of your dressings. Are all your dressings homemade at the restaurant? Yeah, everything. Everything is homemade there. The ketchup is the one thing we don't do homemade. Hmm. But everything else is. So. Well, I've had, you had the, I think it was the pineapple habanero uh, hot sauce. And it was incredible. It, was, it had more pineapple than habanero. It was, it was really, really good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. And that was homemade as well. And we talked about that day and it's really, it was good. And especially on your, on your uh, fries, which are almost like, or their chips. Yeah. And it, mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. A lot of people like to put that on the chips and you know, my neighbor um, grows peppers, but she doesn't really like to eat spicy food. So. <laughs> She gives them to us and the bartender Dave was like, man, you should do a pineapple habanero hot sauce. And I was like, all right, you got a pineapple? And he's like, yeah. And he went over to his house and got it. You don't see it very often. You see the mango and, you know, and other added flavors. The, the pineapple is a really good mix. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks. So what I did there is cored out a cabbage. So I don't know if you saw that, <laughs> but I took that right there and I cut it in half. And once you cut the cabbage in half, then you have a core. And you, what you can do is just take a V cut like that and cut the cabbage 
like that. So now everything you have here, we can use for our coleslaw. And this is just a little slicer that I have that you can get at most Asian markets. And uh, you just slice the cabbage like this. It's also called a mandolin. Um, so it looks pretty simple. I mean, there's different versions. You're just slicing this up. You've already made your dressing right, for the most part, correct? Uh, yep. Now we're putting the vegetables in. There's no excuse not to be able to take a great coleslaw to a picnic now. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> right? And you can say, I made this from scratch. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the idea is that when you do this, it's going to taste noticeably better than, than when you just get it pre-made. And I think that's... That's kind of our whole idea, and you know, we're trained chefs, so we can pull it off. Um, but you know, also if we say you know we can buy something that's better than we can make, then there's no point. Absolutely. But we think that this is really good. We we love it, and um, so the red cabbage is going to be uh, three cups here, and the. Green cabbage, or sorry, the red cabbage. The green cabbage is going to be three cups, and the red cabbage is going to be maybe about a cup. Mm. Yeah. And then don't do this too far ahead. Just do this an hour ahead or two. Keep everything if crisp. You can. Or... And it'll just, yeah, keep everything crisp. And the red cabbage has a tendency to kind of make everything turn purple. Mm. So if I were, you know, you could even take a little bit less than that if you wanted to. Um, and then you want to have some carrots in there, I think, to make it colorful. And this is the dangerous thing, you know. <laughs> you get the teeth in there. You just have to kind of be careful in practice. These things also come with safety guards too. Uh, but I just like to hold it at, and cut it long here. And I just do about a half cup of carrot. Oh, it's too crazy. And then you can go down there in the ca carrot. And then this looks like a lot of cabbage. So I'm going to increase the total salt to about... Um, one teaspoon total there. It's always good to season as you go, you know, season a little bit <laughs> at the start of the recipe, season a little bit at the middle of the recipe. This one I don't think we'll need anymore, so that just kind of needs to marinate for a little bit. And so we have Chef Brian. Uh, he's going to actually make an, the, a kingfisher platter for us. He's going to do three episodes. This will be the first one. Uh, for the coleslaw, and actually you can watch them in any order, uh, but we'll do coleslaw, a fried mullet, uh, and what's your other dish that you're going to be making? Cheese grits. Cheese grits, oh, that's Cheese a staple grits. in the south. So uh, not only watch this one, make sure you watch all the other ones. Uh, and this is at Kingfisher, it's at 1500 Barancas Avenue. Uh, they're open Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then on Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. All day. All day long, live music on most weekends. Uh, you can go to their website at uh, kingfishersandwiches.com. Uh, make sure you follow them on social media. I know you guys have uh, Facebook, you have Instagram, uh, all under Kingfisher, and you can find out their, their special menu items. Uh, they can have extended hours, uh, just depending on how the weather. Uh, is that, this is pretty much done, correct? Yep, coleslaw, done. <laughs> That's easy. Well, thank you so much for being on the, the show with me today, uh, Brian. Uh, we really appreciate it. I can't wait to try this coleslaw. And uh, make sure you check out all the other episodes. Uh, thank you for watching Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. This has been Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. That's all we have for this episode of City Roundup. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you, same place, same time, next week. This has been City Roundup with Saida Rosa. City Roundup is the City of Pensacola's one-stop shop for everything having to do with Pensacola. Join us again each Friday at 8 a.m. for more of City Roundup.